With record-breaking transfers and attendances, 2022 was a huge year for women's football. The World Cup is heading to Australia and New Zealand, so could 2023 be even bigger? Hello there and welcome to Football Now from Doha. With International Women's Day fast approaching, we thought we'd take a deep dive into female football, the rate in which it is growing and the steps needed to ensure that that continues. Who better to speak to then than one of the game's most influential voices? Nadia Nadim's incredible story began when she was born in Afghanistan. She then fled to Denmark and not only did she forge a successful playing career, but she also represented the Danes at international level. We caught up with her and asked her what she makes of the women's game right now. But I don't think the full potential uh, of the women's game has been seen yet. Um, this is something that's going to take time. Um, Rome wasn't built over one night or one day. And you know, there still is like this huge gap between women's and men's football. I don't think they are so similar in that way, but I just want women's game to have the same access opportunities as, as the men's side. I think that is key for me, access, for it to be able to grow as the men's game has been doing. And I, I do believe that we're on the right path, but it's going to take time for you to be there where you're like, wow, this is, you know, where it's supposed to be. At 35 years old, Nadim is something of a footballing veteran. Off the pitch, she's an ambassador for UNESCO's girls and women's education, something that is clearly close to her heart. I think education and football is almost the same thing because they're both tools for you to achieve your goals or even fight like yourself out of a situation. And I've, I know this, a part of football, you know, this has been, it's my life. I, I, I love the game and it's given me all the opportunities that I know and it's has taught me everything that I know. But also education was something that is very deep in me. I hate the fact that there's so many, especially girls, around the world who don't have that opportunity to have that access to, to school. It's heartbreaking. Even my, you know, the country that I was born in right now, you don't have that. I'll try to do anything in my power, try to somehow change it. I know I'm a little person, but with time I hope that I'm going to get stronger. Now, with the World Cup taking place this summer, 2023 is set to be a huge year for women's football. New Zealand and Australia will, for the first time, host the sport's biggest competition. The tournament is set to break all sorts of viewership records as well. Before we look ahead, here's a little bit of women's World Cup history. The first recorded edition of an unofficial Women's World Cup took place in Italy back in 1970. That was won by Denmark. Over the next decade, many countries lifted bans on female football, meaning more women's national teams. But it wasn't until 1991 that FIFA became the official organisers. That following decade was when the popularity began to really grow. The USA hosting for the first time in 1999 was a significant moment for the trajectory of the sport, with the final having an attendance of over 90,000 people. Germany won the first two tournaments of the new millennium, but it has been back-to-back -back US dominance ever since. They've reached the last three consecutive finals, winning the previous two, and by the 2019 edition in France, popularity of the women's game had reached unprecedented levels. But could we see the 2023 tournament in Australia and New Zealand turn it up a notch once again? We saw that in 2019 with the Women's World Cup in France. That was the biggest one that had happened then. But off the back of, of the, the Women's Euros in the summer, like you say, England having that success and certainly the game is absolutely shot through the roof, I think, in Europe. I think all the ingredients are there for, for this one to be the biggest ever and to go one step further than, than 2019. Match going fans, I think, will, will go up. I think the number of teams participate in the number of coaches, the number of players that will be there will be even higher. The quality will be even higher. And I just think, in general, the global interest will be even higher. So I think if we can get the broadcast views up to at least a similar level to, to the Women's Euros in 2022, then I think World Cup 2023 will be the biggest that there has and, and ever will be. Well, not too far from here. 2023 has already proved to be a big year for women's football in Saudi Arabia, with the country hosting its first ever 11-a-side tournament. Like its neighbours Qatar, the country is making waves within the sport, having recently become associated with the Premier League's Newcastle United, and of course, the recent transfer of the superstar Cristiano Ronaldo. So just how important could the growth of the women's game be here for young, aspiring players in the Middle East? It's a huge step. Um, football in general is a growing sport and especially in Saudi Arabia at the moment the country is developing at a, such a rapid pace so women's football at the moment in Saudi Arabia especially with whatever is happening men's football will inspire them so much in the women's football the Middle East in general all the Arab countries here they love football they dream of football the, the sport is means so much to them so especially for the women's game 
to develop more and more in around this region is very important. Now, whether it's men's or women's football, the biggest talking point is almost always transfers. Which struggling player's time has come to an end and which star will break the hearts of their own fans and join a rival? Well, records were broken this past year when Manchester City's Kira Walsh moved to Barcelona for a record €400,000. The first £1 million men's transfer, though, came way back in 1979. So could 2023 be the year that we see one of those in the women's game? I think this could well be the year we do see a record-breaking bid in the women's game. We came so close in January when Arsenal made the bid for Alicia Russo from Man United. And I think even then, just to see that amount of money being spent, you just kind of think we are close to that million pound mark now. The bids are just going to get higher and higher in each year. And if it can't hit that million pound mark this year, then certainly next year, I, I don't see why not. Yeah, interesting stuff indeed. That brings us to the end of this week's show. Do let us know your thoughts at home using the hashtag FootballNowWomen's Day. And we'll see you next time for more Football Now.